There's something curious about Scotland when seen from above. An almost perfectly straight line cuts right across the country from coast to coast. You might have never noticed, but that giant scar has existed for hundreds of millions of years. And right along its path lies one of Earth's biggest mysteries – the Loch Ness Monster. Meet the Great Glen Fault. Just like other major fault zones around the world, it was born because of the movement of Earth's tectonic plates. So let's go back in time, like 430 million years ago. At that point, a massive geological drama was going on called the Caledonian Orogeny. Now, orogeny is just a fancy scientific word for how mountains are formed. So this whole region looked totally different back then. There were these three ancient continents called Laurentia, Baltica, and Avalonia. Think of them like, uh, I don't know, giant puzzle pieces slowly floating around on Earth's surface. Over millions of years, these enormous chunks of land drifted and eventually smashed into each other. When they collided, the edges of the continents crumpled and folded, kind of like a piece of paper bunching up when you push it from both sides. But some scientists believe the continents didn't just crash straight into each other. Instead, they started sliding sideways past one another. Imagine pressing your fingertips together and rubbing your hands back and forth. That sideways motion is what scientists call a strike-slip fault. What I mean is, these massive blocks of rock move side to side rather than up and down. So, bit by bit, the land on either side of the fault kept inching past each other, shifting by several miles over geologic time. During the late Cretaceous to early Tertiary, which happened roughly 66 million years ago, the region shifted once again. This time, scientists believe the land's displacement was about 64 miles. Then the ice ages came along. Rivers and glaciers found that giant crack in the Earth and dug it out even more, making it deeper and wider. That's how they carved out the lakes that follow the fault path. Finally, Dump all of that into a geological blender, and there you have it. The Great Glen Fault in all of its majestic glory today. Yep, all that movement of the land helped sculpt the mountains and deep valleys that shape the highlands as we see now. Now the interesting thing is, the story of the Great Glen Fault doesn't stop in Scotland. This scar in Earth's crust actually has a secret twin across the ocean. The fault probably continues on the other side of the North Atlantic over in North America. But over there, it's no longer one continuous crack. About 200 million years ago, Earth decided to shake things up. That's when the Mid-Atlantic Ridge began forming, basically a giant underwater mountain range that started pushing the continents apart and broke the original fault. So now, the North American side of the Great Glen Fault shows up as what is now called the Cabot Fault, also known as the Long Range Fault. It slices through the length of northwestern Newfoundland in Canada and even stretches out into the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Meanwhile, back in Scotland, the fault lines up perfectly with the Great Glen, a valley about 62 miles long, stretching from Inverness in the northeast all the way to Fort William. And it's filled with gorgeous locks. One of the largest and most famous of these locks, of course, is Loch Ness. Yes, I'm talking about THE Loch Ness that mysterious stretch of water that's said to be home to the Loch Ness Monster. You know, the legendary creature with the long neck that likes to poke out of the water every now and then, and that sends shivers down the spines of anyone lucky, or unlucky enough, to catch a glimpse. At least, that's what people say. But despite many years of searching for the creature, everything from thermal imaging drones to miniature submarines, no one has found any real evidence of the monster. And one interesting fact is that the Loch Ness Monster might be directly linked to the Great Glen Fault. Some geologists think that plenty of Nessie sightings might actually be, well, just simple bubbles, big ones, and they were probably caused by the fault itself. The thing is, all the movement in this region hasn't been confined to millions of years ago. Over the past 150 years or so, there have been occasional moderate earthquakes rumbling through the highlands. When the fault lines shift, even just a tiny bit, they can release gas pockets trapped underground. Then rising gas bubbles can disturb the surface of a lake, creating ripples, waves, or sudden bursts of movement across the water. 
And that's exactly the kind of thing that might look to someone standing on the shore like a giant creature swimming just beneath the surface. But in reality, it could simply be the Earth shifting by a fraction of an inch along that ancient fault. Or, as I like to put it, the lake has farted. Big question, is this region still moving? I mean, is this big geological map actually getting bigger nowadays? Well, it's hard to say, because scientists don't all agree. Some researchers think the Great Glen Fault is still active today. They consider it a reactivated strike-slip fault, meaning there might still be some action happening deep underground. The rocks on either side might still be straining and inching past each other. And in fact, occasional moderate tremors have been recorded over the past 150 years, usually with magnitudes of around 3 or 4. But not everyone is convinced. Other scientists point out that there is no solid evidence of significant modern activity along the main fault. And the seismic activity over the past few centuries hasn't been strong enough to prove the fault is seriously on the move. Take the Inverness earthquake that happened in 1901, for instance. To this day, it's considered one of the strongest that ever happened in Scotland. People felt it all across the country, and the earthquake damaged several buildings in Inverness. The situation was so intense that it gave the feeling of, oh boy, this crack is definitely growing. But the specialists aren't so convinced. Some believe it likely happened on a secondary fault connected to the Great Glen Fault, but not directly on the main fault itself. So, once again, it's hard to say for sure whether the Great Glen Fault is still actively moving today. Despite all the different studies and debates over many years, there are only a few conclusions about this huge gap that everyone agrees on. The fault is unusually straight, it is super ancient, and it is extremely deep by any standards. That's not the only cool fact about Scotland's territory, though. Let's travel to the islands that lie off the northwest coast of the mainland, to the Isle of Skye. This place was once home to a wide variety of dinosaurs during the Middle Jurassic period. The thing is, finding dinosaur fossils from this time period is super rare, but the Isle of Skye is an exception. Specialists discovered that about 167 million years ago, give or take, dinosaurs were mingling on the muddy edges of a warm lagoon over there. As they gathered around this ancient watering hole, they left behind layers of overlapping footprints. Specialists first noticed these tracks in the early 1890s, but at the time, they concluded that the impressions were petrified burrows of ancient fish. But then, in 2019, a graduate student from the University of Edinburgh went there and figured, nah, these are definitely three-toed dinosaur footprints. And he was right. Over several years of fieldwork, he and his colleagues discovered more than 130 individual prints. The team believes that the tracks were left by megalosaurs. These were large dinosaurs, around 20 feet long, and they were serious meat-eaters. In fact, they sat right at the top of the local food chain during the Middle Jurassic. But at the time those footprints were made, these big boys probably weren't hunting prey. No. Their tracks show that they were just walking around wandering in different directions, probably hanging out near the water. And this spot is so special because it gives us a rare peek into what life was like in the Jurassic period. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.